Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. So I just finished recording attempt number 17. That was a success. And we're going to try this again. Usually what I what, usually what I do is I exit out of Orbiter completely and reload it. But I'm going to go ahead and try to just uh, do a new flight and we'll see how it goes. It seems to me sometimes when I do that, there are, uh, I think everything works okay, but I think there are issues with audio. But let's go ahead and try it. So let me switch to camera views. Let's go ahead and view our flight record. So 17 attempts, eight successes. And let's try again. 400. So let's not view our flight record this time. Let's skip the intro. So there's our big bang, kill rotate. So we do want to note like our vertical speed is still held. So it's not a complete reset. Our retro doors are still open, but uh, left shift escape right shift escape and I guess one advantage will we won't have to mess with our our com nav although maybe we will uh, because of the com nav actually let me worry about that later let's go into interplanetary MFD and we've already got Brighton Beach targeted and we've already got the altitude targeted the anticipation angle so all that's good so now we just have to pick a time so let's page over and let's start with um, 2700 and go 2800 that's better 2900 better or was that is that better okay yeah so 2900 is better let's look at 3000 uh, so actually 2900 somewhere between let me look at 27 2850 let me look at 2950 and 2900 so about Let's go with 2950 on this flight and let's burn it and let's log it. So like before, let's just go ahead and copy this entire line down and we're doing 2950 this time and we didn't change the anticipation angle. These will change and then we'll worry about that part later. Why is it not burning? Why did it not do the burn? Oh, I know why. Uh, okay, so this is actually one of the reasons I don't like to reset. Uh, I, I forget that it does this. It actually sets the TEJ to a time. So let me turn off auto burn. And let me set the TEJ to zero. And let's just go ahead and burn it. So yeah, I forgot that it sets the TEJ like that. Let me actually come back up here though. Let me set that back to 2950 and now we can burn it yeah I forgot that when you do a, a replay it adjusts the TEJ because like I said usually when I do this I exit out of orbiter and close down the launch pad and start everything back up again so hopefully that doesn't cost me a failure by not going through the normal procedure that I usually do I think it'll be okay though alright so we have that set up so let's go ahead and go retrograde and let's bring up burn time calculator and we're going to put in our re-entry velocity which is 3724 so our re-entry angle for this flight is 55129 and our distance is right there let's go ahead and log that or well not log it but enter it into our calculator so we have a re-entry angle of 55.129 and a distance of 270 Zero, zero, 009 so for this flight um, there's not a big difference here so let's go to 34 let's actually try 233 all right so we're going to do 233,000 meters for this flight oops 233,000 meters for this flight all right, let's go ahead and get things underway. So we do not need this anymore. So let's bring up our camera. And if we go back three times, we get our back camera. Turn this off, kill rotate, kill rotate. And let me go over to com nav. I think that's okay, but let me go back to 15 just in case. And then when we get closer in, I'll switch it back to uh, 0.2. All right, so we wanna have burn time calculator up on this side. And landing gears up, retro doors are open. 
go ahead and set this just a tad bit lower. I accidentally hit reset. So I like to have this around, you know, 5, 10. Let me go a bit higher than that. Something around that range. All right, so kill, rotate, kill, rotate. Now we're going to warp time forward down to 400 kilometers and put in our data just for that sake of comparison because I think it's interesting. Come out of a little bit of time warp. Come out again and come out again. And now we're down to, let's go a little bit further. Now we're down to point 0.1. All right, DV and... We do VS first, 3136. Give that a second to update. It's updated. Control P to pause, and we're going to put 192164 into our sheet. 192164, 192164. And now we're going to come back over here and pause. And we're going to put in the DV for the ground speed, which is 3580. Enter. Give that a second to update. It's updated. Control P to pause. 249750. 249750. So again, not too far off in this case because the range is pretty low. At least I'm thinking that's the reason. So we're going to do the burn at 233 kilometers. Well, This says 225 if we, okay, so this wouldn't work because if we did the burn at 220 kilometers, we would hit the ground for sure. We would for sure hit the ground because this is the ideal burn under, you know, with perfect human reaction time, perfect uh, engine ramp up and not taking into account the curve. So in this case, I'm actually going to say that's, um, I'm going to put it like a red because we would be dead if we did that one. So even though the calculation isn't far off, it's it's below a point that would uh, be successful. So that's no good. So interesting. So even though the range is low, um, I guess because the velocities are higher, we have to go more in this direction. And 60% would be pushing it really close. In this particular flight, to 70% is the closest to that. So interesting. All right, let's go ahead and unpause. Let's go back to real time, go back to retrograde. And we're gonna begin the burn at 233 kilometers. Okay, let's go ahead and warp time four, get down to that point. And we're pretty close, come out of time warp and getting ready to do the burn. 233 kilometers, we don't wanna be late. And I was late, but not terribly late. All right, let's go ahead and warp time forward. Get down through this burn. Primarily, I watch the vertical speed. And now I'm gonna go back to real time. This feels a bit tight. Not a ton of time left, but I think we'll be okay. Well, the fuel is looking good at the moment. All right, so let's get ready to kill the burn here when our vertical speed gets low. This should be on GPS VTOO. Actually, it should be on COM nav. Go on frequency, VOR VTOO. All right, and I guess we can actually kill the burn. Kill the burn. Kill the burn. All right, and we're done. Going level, going to the down cam, and okay, we're almost lined up. I'm gonna put in a bit of forward velocity as soon as we're leveled out. Rotation, translation, rotation. Okay, we're really well lined up over the pad. We're only 147 meters off, so that's excellent. So we should have no issue on this one. Okay. Translation. So let's translate up and over so we can get a bit better alignment. We don't need any forward velocity. Rotation. Go ahead and rotate. I just like to have it right in front of me. So time should be okay. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and translate forward. Oh. Translate, translation. translate forward a bit more. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and hold down. Uh, well, let me actually. And I'm gonna go ahead and hold down two just to use some of my RCS. Okay, but I think we're gonna be all right. We have time. Uh, let's put the landing gear down. I don't think I've done that yet. Gear down. Okay, gears down. Slow down the vertical just a little bit because it's making me, making me nervous. Oh no, 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 no. Mm, all right, well. Okay, we're almost over the center of the pad. Let's go ahead and start taking out some of that forward translation. I'm getting a lot of like audio blips. So calculation was good here. Let's, let's hold. All right, and let's go ahead and turn that off. So 90 seconds left, we're good there. Maybe we can descend just a little bit faster. But this is a success as long as I don't blow it here in the last couple of seconds, but I think we're fine. <coughs> 100. Okay, we're 100. 200 meters. 200. 50. 50. 40. 40. 30. 30. 20. 20. 10. 10. And we'll slow things way down. Okay, turn that off and break. Alright. It's another success. Go ahead and log it. So, success. So that is our, so using the formula so far we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've had six successes out of seven attempts. And again, this was purely my own fault. If we had set this at 2850 or 2900, I am certain that would have been a success. I really wish I could repeat flight 15. I really wish I could repeat the parameters of flight 15, but, um, yeah, yeah, so you can see that, uh, you know, this law of cosines method for calculating the altitude to begin the burn is really accurate. You know, it has, um, you know, proven itself multiple times. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for this flight. Uh, go ahead, hit the like button if you would. And, yeah, let me know what you think of this method and what is what is your own opinion when you look at that spreadsheet and you see those comparisons that I'm drawing, you know, what, what, what is your thinking, you know, when you look at that, if you want to do, if you didn't want to bother with, you know, making a spreadsheet for the law of cosines and you just wanted to, you know, do what I was doing on those other flights with the 50%, 60%, 40% method, you know, when you look at, when you look at these numbers, you know, what do you think you would do differently? Like on this flight, you know, we had this range of like 94 and clearly, you know, this might have worked, 50% might have worked, 40% uh, probably would have worked, but something like 30% would have been better. But on this flight, it's the other direction. 50% um, would not have worked, we would have hit the moon. 60% um, might, let me see. 60% might have worked, but you would have been scraping the tires, I would think, on the on the ground by the time you stopped. And then, but in this one, 70% would have been better. And the weird thing is, is the range on this is really low. Like it was up here on these successes. So, so it's not, it's not as simple as, you know, just, you know, just looking at one thing. There's multiple things here that we have to consider. And, um, and I'd have to sit down and really look at this back and forth, back and forth, and say, well, you know, in this flight, 
uh, this didn't work, the range was low, but there's some other factor here that means we would have wanted to go closer to, you know, 70%, whereas, you know, in, in this flight, or rather in this flight, we would have wanted to go more and more towards 30%. And even though the range really wasn't that, you know, huge, it certainly wasn't like 145, 140. So just some interesting things to think about. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next video.